In this lesson, we're going to look at transformations, transformations on a variety of functions. And it'll be mostly review, but I think you'll see some new ideas here as well. So to begin with, I have some lists on the screen here. The first list is just a list of a bunch of the transformations you would have seen in the past. We have our vertical and horizontal translations, which we commonly call shifts. We have our vertical and horizontal stretches and compressions, and we have our reflections. The vertical reflections, which occur in the x-axis, and the horizontal reflections, which are about the y-axis. The second list that I have is a list of all the base functions or parent functions that you would have applied transformations to in the past. We have y equals x, which is our straight line, y equals x squared, which is our parabola. We have our square root function, y equals square root of x. We have our reciprocal function, which is y equals one over x. Y equals something to the X, uh, that gives us an exponential function. Now that base B would be you know two or three or one half. That's our exponential functions. And we have our trigonometric functions, which are Y equals sine X and Y equals cos X. So to begin with, let's do some examples to refresh our memory on how transformations work. So here we have the function y equals x squared, and we have the graph drawn there as well. We're going to do something to that function to transform its graph. So what do we do? Why don't we take uh, y equals x squared, and this time we'll change it to y equals, let's do 3x squared plus 5. So we have two transformations occurring here, and hopefully that's uh, familiar to you. We have a transformation that results from this 3, and one that results from this 5. And hopefully you remember that this 3 here causes a vertical stretch of factor 3. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll write that out here. That 3 is a vertical stretch of factor 3. Vertical, I'll just use some short form, vertical stretch of factor 3. And this 5 is a vertical shift 5 units up. So vertical shift 5 units up. Now I won't get into um, why these things are happening too much. You would have seen that in previous courses, but just a quick reminder. Why is the 3 a vertical stretch? Well, we used to get our y values by taking an x value and squaring it. If I write a 3 in front of that x squared, I'm multiplying it by 3. So now for any given x value, the y value that I end up getting is triple what it used to be because I'm multiplying x squared by 3. So that gives the appearance of a vertical stretching of the graph. Similarly, the plus 5 takes those old y values, which used to come from x squared and now come from 3x squared, and increases them by five. So you get y values that are now five higher than what they used to be. So that makes it look like the graph actually shifted up five, five up the y axis. Okay, so let's, um, let's actually graph this function here. Now you may have used table of values in the past or something like that, or, or several steps to help you graph the transformed graph. I'm going to do both transformations in one step without the help of a table of values. I'm just going to do it right on the graph. Now you do what works for you when it comes to drawing transformed graphs. I like this way because it seems to be efficient for me and it also keeps things nice and tidy on my graph. I don't have all these intermediate steps. So the first thing I need to do is pick some nice points to work with. Uh, points that I can read really easily, points that are on the grid line crossings like 0, 0, 1, 1 is a good one, negative 1, 1. Now I would choose 2, 4 normally, but by the time I triple that y value and add 5, uh, that's going to be 3 times 4 plus 5 is 17. Well, my graph only goes up to 15, so I'm not going to bother with, uh, with that one. So let's apply these transformations to these three points, starting with the one at the origin. Now that's 0, 0, so it has a y value of 0. If I triple 0, I get 0, and then add 5, I get 5. So that y value is going to be 5 now. It's still going to be at the same um, x value, but it's going to be up at 5. Let's do the, the transformations on the point right there, which is 1, 1. Now that has a y value of 1, so when I triple it, I get 3 and then add 5, I get 8. So that point is going to move up to 8. And the same thing is going to happen to this point for the exact same reasons we're going to end up at 8. 
Now that gives me enough information to do a rough sketch of the graph. It's not going to be a good one. I'm just going to make sure that I don't pass an X value of two or negative two, because remember that point on that line there would have been up at like 17 or something here. Um, so I'm just going to make sure I stay uh, in those boundaries and I'll try my best to do a nice smooth parabola for you. It might be tough with this pen, something like that. All right, good enough, you get the idea. So there it is, the transformed graph, y equals three x squared plus five in red. Let's do another one here. This time our base function is y equals the square root of x. And this time, why don't we do a transformation that results in equation y equals the square root of one fifth x. Now this is a horizontal transformation resulting from the one fifth here. And perhaps you remember from the past that horizontal transformations are always kind of the opposite or the reverse of what they look like they should be. So this is actually not a horizontal compression of factor one fifth, it's actually a horizontal stretch of factor five. Now I'm not going to get into it in, the, in this video as to why it's reversed or backwards from the way it looks like it should be. Uh, but I will make another video to explain that. So check that out. The other thing I want to mention is I often hear students say stuff like, well, the one fifth is inside the function, you know, it's in the brackets, or it's under the square root there. So that means it's horizontal. Um, I'd encourage you not to think of it like that, but rather to say, uh, what used to be x is now one fifth x. In other words, we replaced x with one fifth x. And that's the reason why it's a horizontal transformation. And again, in that other video, I'll show you why this ends up being a um, horizontal stretch of factor five. But it is indeed a horizontal stretch of factor five. So I'll just write that. So horizontal stretch of factor five. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means we're going to take all of our x values and make them five times as large. So let's go pick some good points to work with again. I think I will pick zero, zero. We can pick uh, the point at one, one, that's right on the grid line crossing. And four, two is also good. I don't think I'm going to bother with uh, nine, three, because by the time I multiply that x value of nine by five, I get 45, and that's going to be off the grid. So I'll work with these ones. So all I'm going to do again is a horizontal stretch of factor five, multiply the x values by five. So this one has a, an x value of zero. So when you multiply that by five, you get um, zero still. So it's an, an invariant point is what we call it invariant. It doesn't go anywhere. Uh, we have this point here, which has an x value of one, multiply that by five, and you get an x value of five. So that point just moved over to there. Okay, and through multiplication, that is. And this point here has an x value of four. When I multiply that by five, I get 20. So I'm just going to move that point over so that it has an x value of 20. And I'll do my best again to smoothly draw this curve. And it keeps going. So there it is y equals the square root of one fifth x roughly. Let's do one more before we move on here. We'll take a base function of y equals three to the x, which we see the graph of there. And we'll, uh, we'll do some transformations to this. Let's do several of them this time. Let's do y equals negative one third, uh, three to the, let's do x minus five, and then we'll do minus two for the whole thing. So we have four transformations here. I'm not gonna write them all out this time. Let's talk about what we have. We have a vertical reflection, so a reflection in the x-axis. We have a vertical compression, so we're going to take our y values and divide them by three. It's a vertical compression of factor one third. And then we've replaced what used to be x with x minus five. So that means we have a horizontal translation. It's gonna be five units to the right, again, opposite of what it looks like it should be. And two units down. So we're going to shift the whole graph two units down. So let's, uh, let's try some of these out and see what we can do. I will draw your attention to the fact that this graph has an asymptote on the x axis. So we have to remember to deal with that as well. Because if we shift this graph up or down, that asymptote is going to get shifted up or down too. Okay, so let's pick some good points to work with here. I'll pick uh, zero one, 
and I'll pick one three and I'll pick two nine. Those are, I think, reasonable points to work with. And let's just apply the transformations. Keep in mind that when doing these transformations, although you can technically do them in any order you want, I strongly recommend that you leave the shifting until last. And the reason for that is because when we do the reflecting and stretching and compressing in the way we usually think about it, it's with respect to an axis. So in any vertical stretches, compressions, or reflections, um, they're all with respect to the x-axis, and horizontal reflections, stretches, or compressions are with respect to the y-axis. Now, if you do the shifting first, you then have to think about where that reference axis is moving to. And that just creates uh, you know, some extra work in your mind. So I strongly recommend leave the shifting until the end. You wanna take care of anything that involves multiplication or division, that is the reflection, stretches, or compressions, before anything that involves addition and subtraction, which is the uh, horizontal and vertical shifting. I strongly recommend that you just work on the transformations in order from left to right when you're looking at the equation. And that way, it'll always uh, work out such that you're leaving the shifting until the end. So starting with the point at zero, one, we have a vertical reflection. So that's just going to reflect that point over the x axis and take it right to there. Okay, so we're not right now we're here. Now I need to do a vertical compression of factor one third. So I need to divide that y value by three. Now it's at negative one. So when I divide it by three, I get negative one third, which is going to be right about there. Uh, and then I just need to move it five to the right and down two. Okay, so let's see here. Five to the right and down two. So I'm gonna go five over from where I was. That takes me to there. And then I'm gonna go down two. So one, two is gonna take me to there. Okay, that's that point roughly. Let's do the same thing to this, this point here. So it's got a y value of three. I'm gonna reflect it in the x-axis and then divide the y value by three or multiply it by one third, however you wanna think of that. So when I reflect it in the x-axis, I go to here, and then I'm gonna divide that by three, and that'll take me to negative one. And then I gotta move it right five and down two. Okay, no problem. So right five from there is gonna take me over to six, and then down two from there is gonna take me to negative three. All right, last one, nine. Okay, so we flip in the x-axis, takes us to negative nine, right here, divide it by three, that takes us to negative three, and then shift it over five and down two. So that's gonna take us over to, what, seven, and then down two from there. Okay, there, all right. So those are my three points. Now, just remember that horizontal asymptote as well. It was on the X axis. The only transformation that's gonna affect that is the shift down two. So now that asymptote is gonna be here at negative two, okay. And I will just draw my curve. Now we can tell kind of by where the points are there that my asymptote uh, is, and my asymptote being here, sorry, that this graph is gonna open downwards, which we would expect because of that vertical reflection. So we're gonna get something that looks like this. Again, it's pretty rough, but you get the idea. Okay, so that was quite a bit of time spent on that, but I think it was worth it. So let's move on now to some other ideas. Um, just, I, I put a bunch of these here to, just to talk about them and, and what transformations we have. I'll draw your attention to some of them. I don't think we really need to talk about the line here or this uh, square root function here, even the reciprocal function here. But let's talk about the parabola that we have right here. <clears throat> Only because I wanna mention something about the horizontal shift. It is not a horizontal shift of eight units to the left. Remember, in order to actually see what the horizontal shift is there, we need to common factor out what's in front of the X here. So if we do that, what do we get? A common factor out of two, and that leaves me with X plus four. So Remember from previous courses that we actually have a horizontal shift of four units to the left, okay? And that all comes from the idea that the base function for this was y equals x squared, and we are replacing x squared with, with this stuff. Or, sorry, we're replacing x with this stuff. It's still squared here. And because of that, we end up with horizontal 
transformations. Just remember that in order to see how much it's shifting by horizontally, um, you need to see how much we are adding or subtracting from x, not from 2x. All right. Uh, and you know, we get the kind of the same thing happening down here. Like this is not a horizontal shift three to the left. What we would need to do to see the shift there is factor out that negative one half. And what would that give us? That would give us x minus well, it would have to be six, right? Because one half times six gives us that three. Uh, so it's actually a shift of six units to the right. And you'd have to do the same thing here. You're gonna factor out a three. So you're gonna have a shift of, what's that gonna be? 60 units, uh, sorry, 60 degrees to the, to the right. Okay, all right, enough of that, onwards. What is this? Y equals F at X. Um, sometimes, you know, we work with functions for which we actually don't have an equation or, you know, we, we have a function where the equation is just too complicated. So we just call our function F at X. Now, when we go to graph it, uh, we think of it as being Y equals F at X. That is the value of F at X. That output value is what gets plotted on the Y axis. So we're just saying pretty much the Y axis is going to uh, indicate the value of F at X. And of course the X axis is talking about the value of X. But what I wanted to get at is that even if you don't know the equation for your function, you can still talk about transformations. So for example, if I had a function which was Y equals F at X, and all that means is Y is some function with X's in it. You know, like we always have, you know, X squared or root X or something like that. It's just some function with X's in it. How could we write out the equations of the transformed function? Well, quite easily, actually. Let's say you wanted to shift this function up a little bit. Uh, you can do that by just adding a value to the end of this. So, for example, Y equals F at X plus 3 would give us a vertical shift three units up. If you wanted to also do a vertical stretch of factor five, well, we could take our f at x, which used to be our, you know, give us our old y values and multiply them by five. So now we have a vertical stretch of factor five and a vertical shift up three units. What about if we wanted to do some horizontal transformations? Well, this is where it comes in handy to think of horizontal transformations the way I mentioned earlier replace x with something else. So if you want to do a horizontal compression of factor, well, let's say one half on this function, you're going to replace x with 2x. Now again, in the video, the other video I mentioned, we'll talk about why you replace x with 2x for a horizontal compression of one half and not with one half X, uh, but that's it. So you can do kind of what you've always done. You know, if you wanna do a horizontal shift, uh, let's say seven units to the right, you're gonna replace X with X minus seven, okay? And you can combine transformations. You can do a, a vertical stretch of factor two as well, and maybe a vertical shift three units up. All right, and we're doing all of this without even knowing the equation of our function. We're just calling our function f at x. All right, so where does that take us then? Yeah, so just some examples here. So this one here, what would you have? Well, you replaced x with 5x. So that's a horizontal compression of factor 1 over 5 or 1 fifth. In this one here, we have our function, our base function of y equals f at x is now being vertically reflected, so a reflection in the x-axis. We're shifting it to the right two and up three. And last but not least, oh, watch out for this one. Uh, we do have a horizontal reflection and we do have a horizontal stretch of factor three, but we do not have a shift of two units to the right. Remember, if we wanna see that shift, we need to factor out what's in front of x. We need to see what we're adding or subtracting from x, not from negative one third x. That's not a big deal. We can just factor out negative one third. Uh, and what would that give us? Well, we need an x here and we'd need a positive and what would have to be six? Because one third times six would give us this two here. So we actually have a horizontal reflection, reflection in the y-axis, horizontal stretch of factor three, and we have a horizontal shift, six units to the left. Fun stuff, we're almost there, let's keep moving. 
Well, let's just do a quick example. Here's a graph of y equals f at x. Uh, let's say we wanted to graph uh, y equals, let's just say, we'll make a nice one here, f at x minus two. What is that? Well, we're taking our y values, which used to be just f at x, and we're lowering them by two. So we're gonna move that whole graph down two. This is a vertical shift, two units down. So I'll pick some nice points. Again, that one seems to be a good one there. Uh, maybe I'll pick, uh, uh, I don't know, this is a good point here. This one maybe here, and this one here. Uh, the peak of the graph is kind of a little, well, oh, it's not too tricky to use. Let's just use that peak there, it's a good one. All right, we're just gonna move them all down too. So that one will come down to, this one will come down two units. So right about there. This one will go down two. This one will go down two, which is gonna put us right at the bottom of the graph. And this point will go down two, which is gonna put us right there. And I'll just do a very, very rough sketch. This is probably gonna be a really messy one because I'm gonna go fast here. <laughs> Whoa, oh, anyway, you get the idea. Okay, let's move on. Oh, I just wanted to mention this notation here. What's this all about? Um, occasionally you'll see something like this where it looks like you have you know two different uh, function notation things happening. Um, what does this mean? Well, let's say somebody asked you to graph uh, y equals g at x, graph the function g at x. Well, what is g at x? Uh, I don't know, it would be really tough to graph it um, because what does this mean? Well, what that means is if you wanna get the functions g at x's graph, what you need to do is take the graph of f at x and do this to it, right? Now, what is that plus two doing? Well, it's just taking the graph of y equals f at x and adding two to all those output values or all those y values. We know this is a, a vertical shift up two units. So could you graph g at x? Well, you could, as long as you have the graph of f at x. All you would do is take the graph of f at x and move it up two units, okay? Even if you didn't have the graph of f at x, you now know how g at x relates to f at x. It's just the graph of f at x or y equals f at x shifted up two. So don't let this sort of thing confuse you. All this is saying is you have a function that came from another function shifted up two units, okay? That's all that means. And just one last thing, this is kind of just for fun. This is a true story from the past. Uh, this test, uh, th this graph was given on a test and I asked students to state the equation of it. And I got two different uh, answers from, from two students. Their names were actually Matt and Becky. And I think it was Matt said that uh, this is the graph of y equals was 4x squared, I think. And his thinking was that we just took the graph of y equals x squared and did a vertical stretch of factor four. Now we can check that because y equals x squared has these red points that I'm drawing in right now. Okay, two, negative two, four. Those, those are all on y equals x squared. Did we just quadruple those y values? Well, sure we did. I mean, zero quadrupled is zero. One quad quadrupled is four and four quadrupled is 16. Yeah, so this is actually correct. But then another student named Becky said, no, 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 it's not a vertical stretch of factor four, it's a horizontal compression of factor one half. She wrote this equation. And is she right? Well, she is too, because you know, if we just take all of those X values of those points and half them, we get this graph, check it out. Like if you half zero, you get zero. This X value here is one, half that you get an X value of one half half this thing's x value, which is two, you get one. So it is working out exactly you know, as, as planned. Uh, so who was right here? Well, they're both right. You can look at this graph as being two different transformations of y equals x squared, a vertical stretch of factor four or a horizontal compression of factor one half. Now, why is that? Well, um, if you just think about, it, you can see this algebraically, this here actually means 2x times itself, right? That's what squared means, times itself. Now, when you do that, um, you get two times two here, which is four, and you get your x times x, which is x squared. So 
surprise, surprise, they're actually the same thing, but you can look at it two different ways. It's kind of neat. And that all often happen where, you know, a transformed graph uh, can, can result from different combinations of transformations, not just one unique um, set of transformations. So there it is, a bit of a review there. That took a little bit of time, but I, I think it was time well spent. And uh, I hope that uh, that was helpful to you. There you go. Take care.